Welcome everyone to the Tarzan Podcast. This is Respawn Named Fire, the Kick-Ass Irreverent Gaming Podcast, brought to you by Affable Idiots. We are here today. Malage brings us together. Uh, we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of fun things like Halo Infinite and shit. Um, but hi, before we get started, I'm Chad Michael Ennis. I'm one of your hosts here on Respawn Named Fire. And with me here we have Adam Crinkle Cut <laughs> Gumby. We can go with that. Rosie O'Donnell, pretty good in that movie, not gonna lie. Crinkle Cut? No, Tarzan. You were talking about Tarzan. A my mind ago. is ar- my mind moved on from Tarzan about three years ago. I've I've never stopped. I, I can't go past it. Can't stop, never stop, won't stop. <laughs> yeah. Papa John's. Oh boy. Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell actually was like really great in that. Yeah, Glad she it, was. You know who I always get confused? Because they're just two hefty white women from the nineties. Rosie O'Donnell and Roseanne Barr. Roseanne, them, I was about to say, I bet it's Roseanne. Yep. <laughs> one of, <laughs> one of racist, them is one a very bad person right now. One yes. of them is, they're pretty, I think, Roseanne's, not sorry, Rosie O'Donnell, she didn't get canceled, did she? No, that was Roseanne who got canceled. Roseanne definitely got canceled, and then somehow got renewed yes. with her own television show, which made her, and then her cancellation made it even more of a thing. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Roseanne or Rosie O'Donnell, or even Tarzan, believe it or not. Maybe Tarzan, no, that's Disney. Um, yeah, we're here no. to talk about all sorts of fun things. You can find us usually here on Sunday evenings at 8.30 Eastern Time. However, this week we're doing things on a Monday. You'll find out why later. Or you can catch us on demand on YouTube services and podcasts Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. As I mentioned earlier, we've got lots of fun stuff like Halo Infinite campaign got revealed. We've got a Splinter Cell return coming. We've got Smash Bros. clone from Warner Bros. And that's where we're starting today. With our main quest. Super Smash Warner Bros. is reportedly a thing. This information that we're about to recap is coming from Chris Scullion. Sounds like a cool pirate. From VGC. Here's the lowdown. Warner Bros. Games is reportedly working on a Smash Bros. style fighter called Multiverses. Very good title or could be an awful title. I'm not. I'm sold either way on it. 50-50. Featuring characters from its various IPs. That is according to a Reddit report, which was corroborated by everyone's favorite person who will confirm all sorts of video game leaks and rumors, Jeff Grubb. Uh, Further credibility was given to the claims following the discovery of a trademark filing by Warner Bros., which was registered last month for the name Multiverses. Oh, fuck. Are we going to get a reveal of this at Game Awards? I hope so. Oh, that'd be nice. Uh, The Reddit post claimed this weekend that the game was being handled by Mortal Kombat developer NetherRealm Studios from Chicago. I went and dropped off my um, RCN cable box right next to NetherRealm Studios uh, in Chicago. Oh. Yeah, because there's an RCN place (laughs) right next to them. Ed Boone hanging out at the cable place. (laughs) uh (laughs) Uh-huh. It is is based on, uh, apparently, the Super Smash Bros. and is a tag team game, although the poster who posted it in the Reddit post was not clear on what that meant and then the last thing here to say about it uh the leak claims that one of the inspirations for the game was for was the ultra instinct shaggy meme and warner bros then actually added ultra instinct shaggy to the opening of its animated movie mortal kombat legends battle of the realms which gives even more credibility to the nether realm studios um partnership and then finally, here's some rumored people who are supposed to be in it, according to the Multiverse's claim. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time brainstorming our own. So according to the Multiverse's claim, the list of characters includes Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, Tom and Jerry from Batman. Sorry. <laughs> no. Tom and Jerry from Batman. Tom and Jerry from Tom and Jerry, the TV show and movie. Batman... From Gotham, Fred Flintstone from the Flintstones, Mad Max from his namesake, Mad Max, and Johnny Bravo from Cartoon Network's Johnny Bravo. Who does a monkey? Yeah. What a cartoon for children about a dude who just lays tons of women. (laughs) Right? (laughs) It's wild. (laughs) Um, What a fucking bop of a game if this is real. And we're going to pretend for a second that it's real. Mm -hmm. 
Yo, it's absolutely real. So the, I have seen some things um, like confuting the Nether Realm if it or if it's not, because there are some people are like, oh, they don't want to be tied down in case they get sold off or whatever. A fighting game company is going to make the Smash Brothers fighting game. Nether Realm makes sense, but if this is true, this is great. The fact that Nickelodeon whatever knockoff game is probably decent and people kind of liked it. Mm -hmm. I, I've like if they can do it, but Warner Brothers actually has studios who make good games, so this would be even better, <laughs> right? Um, and hey, Teach we'll get Nordic is making Bikini Bottom rebreathed edition or whatever, re rehydrated. Yeah, rehydrated second. Yeah, but compared to like another realm or just another Warner Brothers studios, I I trust this more. It'd be so fun, man. I like these. Smash Brothers type games are fun, little party fighters, and the main thing is the roster. Like, just based on this list of the you know like supposed what's on the like Shaggy from Scooby, right? You already got me right there. Like, give me the you've only have me at ten percent of my power, Shaggy, in this fighting game, and I'm all about it. But it's just like Gandalf and Batman are gonna fight Mad Max. Like, come on, come on, guys, let's go. come on. I hope Gandalf. Be two things. I hope Gandalf's super is either. He turns into Gandalf the White and just fucking goes mm. ham on everybody. Or he just shows up with a bunch of Shadowfax horses and just tramples oh, everyone man. with horses. The Lord but it's at the horses. very end. Like, it's one of those you have 1% health left and you are, like, surely going to die. And then just a bunch of horses. Come over the, over the horizon. That'd mm -hmm. be great. Um, yeah, I hope it's true. All the, everything's pointing to it. I didn't think about it, but Game Awards... That'd be a perfect time to show off something super cool yeah. and get people excited. And uh, God, I hope this... What a thing that I had no idea could be a possibility, but I'm actually excited. So like the Nickelodeon one, I was like, I like the idea, but it seems sort of like a budget game. I'm sure it's still fun, but it's like, you know, there's no voice acting. There's no like licensed music, blah, 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 blah. But right. Warner Brothers, I feel like they could do it. Like they'll actually <laughs> let that stuff be used and known. And here's um, the thing too, like... The metaverse is popular right now. You have Fortnite with all of these crossovers. People want to see all of these IPs in the same place. You have like Brawlhalla, which is like basically the indie Super Smash Bros with all the indie superstars. Like Facebook wants to be a metaverse, all whatever the fuck that means. And so like if we can have all of these things in there, I remember when I saw, we'll get into this in a second when we start brainstorming our things. I remember when I saw Lego Batman and I mm. saw in there, they had all of the freaking like all the DC superheroes, they had the Lego people, they had Voldemort, they had all of this shit in there from WB. And I was just like, all of these people are in one place in a movie? That's fantastic. And now if I could beat each other up as them, oh, lordy. Yeah, get rid of the toys of life. Just give me a 70 yeah. man roster of, yeah, like mm -hmm. Ron, but not Harry. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> what ridiculousness you could do. Uh, yeah. Be great, man. I really hope this is a thing. All right. Let's do an Adam's Weekly segment. Adam's Weekly segment with ice. I don't know what, what the ice Ooh. is used for. It's just thought of Dentine Ice, the gum. Oh, I haven't um, yeah. Dentine Ice in a long time. <clears throat> Nobody has. Um, so, <laughs> on Adam's Weekly segment, we're going to do it early. We're not doing it at the end of the show. We're doing it right now. Nice. It's way too early fantasy casting for the Warner Brothers multiverses game and this was a fun one because i went on wikipedia and i'm like what does warner brothers own and i was like oh boy this is gonna be fun because there is some wild shit in here so everybody buckle in we're gonna fantasy cast what we want in, in the roster besides the already supposed elite guys which of course you would assume but we have do more you, people to pick from for the for the structure of this do you have like a list of people already that you're like, I want this character from this, this character from this, or are we just going to be like, oh my God, do you realize they own this? Oh, what if this person was in it? Like, is it a conversation or is it like bounce back and forth kind of thing? It's up to you. I have a list of people, but we can do whatever you want to do. Because I, I was can, looking through I, them like, that would be cool, that'd be cool, that'd be cool. I think for structure's sake, let's go through your list, and every time you name someone, I'm going to also find a person. I do not have a list, but I could very easily generate one in my brain. Just power. think of one. Okay. We're going to do a real weird one right off the top. Okay. It's an Adult Swim show. He had already been a video game character in the past. Mike Tyson for Mike Tyson Mysteries. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the cartoon version of Mike Tyson would definitely work in a, a Smash Brothers fighting game. Come on. Yeah. Especially jumping from, you know, Punch-Out to... From that Nintendo NES game to, to this. Yep. 
Mm. But now he's a cartoon dude who solves mysteries. It's even better. Yeah, that's fantastic. And obviously, he already has his moves out there. Y'all, I'm almost done eating these cheese crisps. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fantastic. Here's one that I think legit has a chance of getting in. Not that Mike Tyson doesn't. But look at this. Look at this list of things they already announced. They are either properties that are constantly having something come out, or they have something upcoming. Like Gandalf. They have the Lord of the Rings television show coming out that they probably mm. want to um, promote. Mad Max. They have the Furiosa movie. Batman has the Batman. Tom and Jerry just had a movie out, but it's also always in production. Shaggy, Scooby-Doo, same thing. What if we get, hear me out, Warner Bros., owns Time Warner, uh, AT&T, owns like, all of that shit, plus HBO. What if we get Daenerys mm-hmm. Targaryen and some fucking dragons to Ooh. promote the new show about the Targaryens that's coming out uh, next year from Game of Thrones? I can see that. Kind of like Pokemon Trainer from Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Just pull out the dragons and, and do battle with the dragon or something. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Or even just like the Ice King. Oh, yeah. He would definitely be cool. Frick, yeah. I could see that. I like that a lot. Um, uh, An easy one that makes tons of sense, and of course, they need to do it. Uh, Rick and Morty. I mean, come on. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. That's just one of the biggest things around, and uh, he's already in Fortnite, so why not be in his own game where you get to punch people and talk to him funny god i love rick and Morty. i just love the way that that they act those characters but anyways that uh, is it's yeah, like rick and, one of my favorite tv shows of all time it's very good it's just so smart <laughs> <laughs> so smart about the stupidest things oh yeah um here's another one the matrix they own the matrix mm-hmm. yeah new morpheus not old lawrence fishburne morpheus New guy from Candyman Morpheus in this oh, thing. Okay. Because I think Didn't Keanu Gio, Reeves, huh? I think Keanu Reeves, like, he had his moment in Cyberpunk and they floundered it. They got to get, and plus they got to promote, they can't just be like, hey, here's Neo. Remember from all those old movies? They could be like, what's something from the new movie that we can pull to get people excited about the new Matrix movie? Mm-hmm. Now, you say no old characters, but Johnny Bravo is on this list, and Fred Flintstone. So. We don't know what Cartoon Network <laughs> has in store for Johnny Bravo. Maybe there's an unannounced project we don't know about. I pretty sure he's been canceled for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I like this. Somebody from The Matrix, especially the new one, or maybe like at least a costume or an echo or whatever. Mm. Um, I'm going to do one. God, there's so many good Adult Swim stuff. I'm going to do one more. Uh, give me... Give me Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Which one's Carl? Want... Is that the meatball, the fry, or the I, shake? The next, no, the next door neighbor. <laughs> oh, I think his the human, Carl. right? Yeah, the human the guy. Nasty, disgusting uh, human. flip flops. <laughs> yep, I don't want the meat. The meat wad makes too much sense. Shake, and they all make too much sense. Give me the next door neighbor. <laughs> Just a fucking idiot. That's great. Let me get that guy. That's great. Okay, here's one that I think also. It doesn't make sense with my argument about like promoting new things upcoming, but I think would be a fucking fantastic character for a fighting game. You brought mm-hmm. this up earlier that New Line Cinema is part of all of this under WB. Mm-hmm. The Mask. Jim Carrey's The Mask. Oh, man, that would be a fun character, wouldn't it? Right? <sighs> he can just fucking like transform into all sorts of different shapes and cartoon characters and shit like that. Remember his dog, Max, gets the mask on, too, and then becomes a little dog mask? Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, the the whole series of movies, Son of the Mask, to draw from. Oh, God. <laughs> there was that cartoon. All those direct-to-DVD movies? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, Mask, yeah, he's just a cartoon character that, yeah, that works. Uh, 100%. My last one for, this is actually my last Adult Swim one, because it's great. They, this will be in the game, but Samurai Jack. I mean, it's a cartoon samurai. Like, come on, let's be honest. That would be perfect, and he's got... There's your sword character. Unlike Smash, there should only be a couple sword characters. Samurai Jack can be one of them. There is a Samurai Jack video game coming, right? There have been a couple Samurai Jack video games, so... I feel like there was like a really high-profile one that was announced. Not one came out like a year ago. ago. Oh, yeah, released August 2020. Oh, what a shame that that came and went. Yeah. Um... 
I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more. Okay. Elf. Oh, yeah. Will now, Ferrell's the question elf. is, is it Will Ferrell or Peter Dinklage? The angry elf, Peter Dinklage? Here's, <laughs> yeah, here, he's... I'll, I'll put another twist onto this. It's Peter Dinklage, the character, but like Zelda and Sheik in Smash Bros, you can switch between angry elf Peter Dinklage or Game of Thrones Peter Dinklage. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, just, just press down B and switch to the other version of Peter Dinklage. Yep. God, that would be a good one. Um, yeah, I can just rapid fire through some of these because they're ridiculous. Austin Powers. I mean, come on. I just, yes. it's not been relevant in forever, but God, oh, I love Mike Mini Myers. Me. And those movies are so good. I don't so know if good. they would do it because he's dead and, and I'd be irreverent, but yeah. like Mini Me as a little character running around. Yeah, Austin Powers, Fat Bastard, that would all be a good time. Uh, give me Annabelle from The Conjuring. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> yes. Why not? Something from that whole universe, for sure. Yeah, because they have a lot of horror stuff, but a lot of stuff's already been in Mortal Kombat, so I'm not really um, going to double dip there. Um, again, Harry Potter characters make tons of sense. Uh, they own gremlins. Mm. So how fun would it be to get Gizmo in a fighting game? Gizmo, and then he gets wet as part of his superpower, and then he's like the angry, gross one for the rest of the thing. And he turns, yeah, and he turns nasty. Um, and then some of the other ones that, you know, like uh, Finn and Jake from Adventure Time, of course, would make sense. Um, oh, there's a lot of cartoons. There's a shit show. ton of cartoon networks. Yeah, there's so many cartoon network shows that work. Um, Dexter, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. There's so much. But yeah, that it's just a funny thing to look at what they actually own and the possibilities that they could pull into this to this game are are ridiculous. I'm sure yeah. we, it'll be like 20 characters and we haven't named any of them. Right. <laughs> it's all the <laughs> shit that like we aren't like we don't care about anymore. A weird one that I think is going to be like really popular that we haven't really seen anywhere else in games yet is Pennywise from It. Mm, I feel yeah. like for some reason that character is even really popular like with kids. Like my niece and nephew at like age 4 and 6 knew who Pennywise the clown was and they were going around telling their friends I saw the movie It. Did you see the movie It? And they didn't see the movie It, but they wanted to seem cool. So they told people mm. they did because they're lying little fucks. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> Pennywise gets so much screen time in that new Space Jam movie. It's ridiculous. He's basically oh, really? behind. He's he's Fucking right Space behind Jam, one man. of the characters the whole movie. He's just right there. Yeah, Space Jam is. Yeah, Looney Tunes makes sense. But he's there the whole It's like, he's just right there the whole time during the basketball game. So um, that would make sense. Uh, this one is kind of a cheat. But the MonsterVerse, a.k.a. Godzilla and King Kong. I don't know how you make that work. Yeah. But that's cool. Maybe a stage based on Godzilla. Like they're they're blowing up buildings and you're fighting on a rooftop or something. That'd be cool. But yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff. I would love to see the game. Just get silly. Yeah. Be ridiculous. Do dumb stuff. Have fun with it. Obviously, and you're not going to have the characters. resources and passion like Sakurai has to like create this incredibly balanced, huge, sprawling love letter to games. But you can make something that's just dumb and silly and fun and badass. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited. I would, didn't think I would care. I'm here for just... I really swing that roster more than anything. Like with that Nickelodeon yeah. one, they were like, <laughs> Toph is in it. I'm like, oh, Toph from Avatar? I'm not going to buy this game, but I like the Tophs <laughs> in the game. That's really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Everyone let us know on Twitter. Tweet us at Respawn Aim Fire who you want to be in the multiverses game from WB. And it has to be a WB property. You can't tell us, like, I want My Little Pony. I don't know. Fucking, they own everything. My Little Pony could be They probably own My know. Little Pony. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I'm also, like, we all know I'm a big Harry Potter nerd, and I recognize that that's going to be a big part of this game, too, because they have the Fantastic Beast movies, like, three more of those coming. They got to pop the shit out of those, so... Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to have some like Niffler or something in there. Anyway, I would love just real quick before we go on mm -hmm. that when you play Voldemort, as the match goes on, you just say less and less of the spell because that's what happens in the movies. <laughs> he just starts yeah. like screaming instead of actually saying the spells. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. So as your health gets to like 90%, he's just like, oh, <laughs> you're doing your attacks. Deny. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fucking love those movies. Love it. All right, let's move on to playtime, where we talk about what we played this week. Um, mine's just going to be a lot of whining and bitching. So, Adam, what did you play this week? The only thing of consequence I played was Prince of Persia for our um, barf game for the month of October. Uh, mm -hmm. Bought it on PC. It was like 10 bucks. 
I'm playing with the controller. It's been alright so far. I'm getting a little bit into it. I uh, will see if I finish it. Because I'm hitting the point where I'm like, hmm, is this what I'm going to do the whole time? Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. I'm, uh... I, yeah, go ahead. Same, same kind of scenario with me. I realized that I have the Platinum Trophy in this game already. So, like, I don't even have that driving me to, like, oh, I'm going to complete it this time in this playthrough. Um, I'll give a short little story about Prince of Persia that happened this week to me. I was... First of all, I am very, very, very sorry for suggesting this game to Adam to put on the thing and then lying to everybody about how readily available it was for you to play because it is not available on backwards compatibility for Xbox unless you have the disc. It is not on PlayStation now like I thought it was. It wasn't one time, yeah, but I it looked, is no like, longer the case. Yeah, I'm like, it's not here. <laughs> and so there are, there are two places where you can play this game right now. You can play it on your PC like Adam did or... You can play it on the original console if you have that still around. So here's my little journey, Adam, about what what a horror it was to try to get this game. First of all, we only have like a week left, and obviously mm -hmm. we're both not that far, so that's a good sign. Um, but I, I was like, all right, how am I going to play this? Let me boot up my PS5. PlayStation Now? It's not on PlayStation Now? What? All right, I've got my PS3 here. I disconnected my Xbox Series X from the Entertainment Center, and I put my PS3 in instead. Had to do an update to access the PSN store. I was like, fine. Then I get on the PSN store and realize that I, when I had this game, it was on disc. At the oh. end of the PS3 life cycle, I threw all of my games in the trash can that is the GameStop trade-in service. Yep. And I used that to buy just PSN credit so I could buy them all digitally because I believed in the promise of digital backwards compatibility on PS4, which never turned out to be a thing. Prince of Persia is not one of those games that I rebought, unfortunately. So. Ooh. I went to the PlayStation store and it was like, I, I went to go hit the download button. It's like, this is $19.99. I was like, oh, damn, really? PS3 version of this game is still 20 bucks. I was like, <sighs> let me go see if I can, I'll just get it on Steam. So I came over to my Mac, loaded up Steam. It was there. It was 10 bucks. I was like, okay, yeah, half uh -huh. price. I can plug it in DualSense and play this thing. Fucking perfect. Bought it. I went to go play it. It says, this is not compatible with Mac. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you already bought Why it, is it showing up in the Steam store on Mac if it's not playable on Mac? So then I had to get a refund for that. And then I'm like, fuck. Okay, now I guess I'm paying 20 bucks to play this on PS3. Went to the PS3. Went to go sign in the PSN. And it's like, oh, you have two-factor authentication on. You have to go generate this random-ass weird password on a website. And I did. And then I went in. And it's like, all right. Plug in the expiration on your card. And I was like, there it is. And it's like... That's not the right expiration. It's like, I'm looking at the fucking card right now. That's the expiration. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, that's not it. If you want to change your payment method, go to this setting. Went to that setting. <laughs> What's your password? I'm not going to generate another fucking password on that weird-ass website. And then I just had to plug in another card. And then even though I had the other card in there, it was still asking me three old one. And then I had to delete that one. Big old headache. Moral of the story is I paid 20 bucks to play it again on PS3. I'm playing it on PS3 uh, with a DualSense 3 I, or the DualShock 3. I do have stick drift on one of my DualShock 3s, unfortunately, as I've just discovered. Oh. So I'm down to my last DualShock. Um, but yeah, I, just, I, beat, I beat one boss in Prince of Persia so far out of the four area bosses and then the final boss and then the epilogue boss. So um, that's about how far I am in that game. And we will talk about that sometime in the next week or two as part of our BARF series. Backlog accomplishment with Respawn and Friends. Next, more bitching, man. It gets better, right? More bitching. <laughs> we all know that Stadia is a horseshit piece of trash service. Oh, no. And every once in a while, I get this little stick up my butt. And I'm like, maybe it's good again. I'll give it another shot. Yesterday, the reason we're not doing this today is because uh, a week ago, five friends and I started a Destiny 2 raid, the Vault of Glass. We got to the last encounter, and then the only other time that we all could get together to beat the last encounter was Sunday night, last night. And so I asked Adam, Adam, can we please move the podcast so that we can be nerds and play this game? And Adam said, absolutely, so we'll do it Monday. Fast forward to Sunday afternoon, and the Bay Area in California gets like three inches of rain total over seven hours. And it's the first rain that we've gotten in since the beginning of the year, at least. 
and the whole world shuts down. Everything fucking shuts down. Comcast, Xfinity, internet, power, like everything outage. And so I'm sitting in my apartment playing Prince of Persia offline and says, we're going to get your internet back up by like 7 o'clock. I'm like, oh, God, we were supposed to start this thing at 4.30. And so I'm testing Destiny with my hotspot. But in my apartment, I live right next to uh, like a 5G ultra wideband tower. Okay. But for some reason, as soon as it hits my kitchen window, I get just LTE and it's like one megabit, one megabit a second, if that. Whew. So I tried it out a little bit. I was able to log on to Destiny, but everywhere I went, it was just me and no other people were like, no other people are in the social spaces. No one else was in the worlds with me. And then the first time I tried to join somebody, it just completely shut down and wouldn't let me do it. So it's like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Kept going, kept going. And then Xfinity said, we don't know when we're going to have it. It used to be seven. Now we don't know when we're going to have it back up. And I'm like, we moved our podcast. These five people are relying on me. Fuck it. I have Stadia. I live next to this tower that does a trillion megabits per second. I'm going to go drive my car around, find a parking lot. (laughs) I'm going to bring an Xbox controller. And I'm going to try this thing from the road and see how it works. So I'm driving around this like five block radius around me with my phone out and the speed test app, just just Mm. driving down the street, (laughs) continually hitting speed tests to start a new test to find out where I have good signal. And while I'm on the road at certain intersections, I'm literally getting a thousand megabits per second, like a gig down. And I'm like, perfect. Great. This is awesome. I'm just going to pull, like I literally am going to pull off into the gas station right beside it. As soon as I hit the gas station, 0.5 megabits. I'm like, jeez, you're kidding me. So driving around, I finally find this like extra large clothing for men's store parking lot that gives me <laughs> <laughs> gives me <laughs> 60 megabits down and 40 Good. up, which is way beyond the Stadia recommendations for playing, for streaming your games. Yep. I do the little speed test on Stadia's site. Says, you're good to go, sir. I said, great, perfect. I load up the game on Stadia. Again, it's all through the web browser on iOS, on iPhone and iPad. Load up the, the website, load up Destiny, and then it's, it looks like, I think I described it yesterday as like a, someone took a 10-piece puzzle and threw it at the wall, and that, like the pixels being all like fucking gross and shit, and it, that's yeah. what it looked like. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And then, obviously, the delay with playing it was awful. And then, get this, there's no in-game voice chat on Stadia. Just for Stadia? You can only chat with other Stadia players through Stadia's party system. I cannot voice chat with people playing PlayStation or Xbox, which is stupid. For all five people who use Stadia. All (laughs) five. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So then I was furious at that. But it doesn't matter because I was like, okay, maybe we can use Discord and I'll communicate via Discord while we play on Stadia. It doesn't matter because I get 90 seconds into this thing and it crashes. Every uh, loaded up, 90 seconds in, crashes. I drive to a Taco Bell, get in the Taco Bell parking lot. It has even better Wi Fi or even better 5G there. Same exact thing. Looks like a fucking puzzle, crashes. And then finally, as I was like getting desperate, I pulled into the drive thru of Taco Bell to get myself a Baja Blast Zero Sugar because I'm keto right now and I can't eat anything else there, but I still like to support Taco Bell. Um, I drive in there. And then I just, I've been randomly checking the Xfinity website and it says, oh, we're connected to your thing and the internet's back up. I'm like, ah! so we started a few hours late. We did not complete what we wanted to complete, but we're mm. trying again tomorrow night. So the, the problem is everything resets on Tuesday mornings. So all of our progress is reset as of. Gotta completely rego. Yeah. But anyway, that's my, that's my um, saga with Stadia and saying it is still a garbage shitty service, even on 5G with way more recommended bandwidth than it suggests and not having party not having group chat i swear to god in game chat that's a weird one anyway i'm done complaining let's talk about some good things here are a couple of good things coming your way if you're listening to this on demand tomorrow morning wednesday <laughs> excuse me around nine eastern you're getting two reviews coming to you uh raf reviews rr for metroid dread we had trevor uh, your lovely friend Holden, who used to be on this thing, and me all talk about Metroid Dread. And then for Far Cry 6, we had Adam and Jacob. What is Jacob from again? Remind McCourt. me. McCourt. Jacob McCourt from Left Behind Game Club. Perfect. 
Uh, you'll get to hear them talking about Far Cry 6. Each one is just a little over an hour, so lots of good content coming to you this week. Check that out. If you are a Patreon member, you've already had access to those for several days. So uh, if you want to be a Patreon member, you can go to patreon.com slash respawnaimfire. Give us $1 to get access to everything we do, including that. That's playtime this week. Adam, let's talk quests. Looking at our quest log. We've got several things in here this week. Some V exciting news. One of them, if you like plugging turnips into dirt, then you might also like (laughs) plugging cocoa powder into vats for making chocolate. Everyone Mm. is hot for chocolatiers. This comes from Cat Bailey at IGN. Are you familiar with Stardew Valley? I've never played Stardew Valley myself. Uh, well, that's a lie. I played 10 minutes of Stardew Valley on this touch screen of my Tesla while I was waiting for it to charge just because I could and then realized that charger goes very, very slow if it's not a Tesla supercharger. So I'm not going to sit here and play this game for nine hours. Um, but Stardew Valley is uh, a game that exists from creator Cornered Ape. Uh, the gentleman is Eric Baroni. Baroni rhymes with baloney, or maybe it's Baron with an E on the end. I would say Barone. Barone. That makes a lot That's more sense, Adam. You have a larger command no of the English language than I do. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, his next game will be The Haunted Chocolatier. It's a brand new sim game that bears a strong resemblance to this previous work. In fact, if you look closely, it might even be a sequel. Um, <clears throat> even though they are not ready to confirm that one way or the other. Barone wrote in a blog following the announcement, quote, Why chocolate? I'm not sure. It just kind of came to me. I think sometimes the best ideas just appear in a flash instead of being cleverly thought out. That's what, that's how I like to work anyway. What's important is the execution. And after 10 years of practice, I feel more confident than ever being able to bring an idea to life. To me, that just sounds like he got fucking stoned one night. And it's like, what if I made a game about chocolate? Don't think too hard you, or else we're going to ruin it. <laughs> he's like, what if you made chocolate in a haunted house? <laughs> like, bro, go for it. <laughs> uh, he also added, quote, regardless, I think a lot of people like chocolate. I love this dude's quotes. They're so good. <laughs> yes. He also outlined some of the ways that it will differ from Stardew Valley. In his previous game, the focus was more humble. But in the new game, he wants to explore more fantastical possibilities. And these even include... Magical haunted ghost chocolate. I hope, one, I hope this game is free on my Tesla because I don't want to pay for it, but I am very interested in whatever magical haunted ghost chocolate is. But two, I hope this game is fantastic and that I actually do want to pay for it, even though I'm not a huge sim person. But yeah. Did you play Stardew Valley? I know I asked you if you're aware of it, but did you play it? I did play it, and I want to get back into it, because this game I liked a lot, and I have a friend, um, she played it, I think she said she put like 600 hours into it. People who love Stardew Valley, that's all that they play. Um, That's true. Like, that's my destiny, is their Stardew Valley. I hope it's now chocolate for them. Exactly. And I want to get more back into Stardew Valley, just I thought I was playing the game wrong, so I kept restarting multiple times, and I actually never got to the part where the game starts. But, (laughs) he does make... He does make it's very good. That's my thing. I will say it is yeah. very. It's so good that I'm like I don't want to mess this up. I better restart because I don't want to mess the game up. So the fact that he's just like, what if you made again? Like you said, he was stoned out of his mind. He's like, all right, we've been we've been in a small town, you know, planting crops and fighting people in mines. What if you went to a haunted mansion and a ghoul helped you make chocolate? <laughs> I'm like, you know what, bro, go for it. You haven't you haven't missed yet. So I'm, I'm here for the ride. <laughs> That's right. You're one for one, man. 100%. Ghost chocolate. Can't lose. Uh, yeah, sure. That's fucking great. I hope I hope that's exactly how it worked out. I just put a <laughs> shirt that says, quote unquote, regardless, I think a lot of people like chocolate. <laughs> the real story is nowhere near as cool. He literally was just like sitting by himself in a dark basement facing the wall in a chair for hours on end just staring. And then he goes... <gasps> ghost chocolate and that was it (laughs) and then he just counts his next 10 million (laughs) dollars yes oh checking in on the twitch chat here uh df and smitty says pp's in my bb's and the birdman 53 says ghost chocolate i knew it yes absolutely ghost chocolate speaking of ghost chocolate you could probably get that from space somewhere and in space is where halo infinite takes place Halo Infinite campaign 
shows us what's new. This information comes from Eddie McCooch at GameSpot. Um, there was a new trailer. It's like six and a half minutes long, showing off a lot of um, stuff coming up from the Halo Infinite campaign, which again is launching in just a couple short months, like six weeks actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's some information about it. The footage shows off how Master Chief will work with the new AI, the weapon, to find out what happened to Cortana after the events of Halo 5. We also see Halo Infinite's wide open level structure, and you can now seemingly call in vehicles. There, uh, there was actually one in there called the Wasp, which is like uh, mm. the the military. I forget what the, the Marines, like the Marines version of like a Banshee almost, which is pretty cool. Looks like it's gonna be fun to drive. Players will find Banished, which is the new enemy faction of um, fucking what's the what's the name of that race of aliens that you fight in Halo? I already forgot. Well, do you want me to go down lore of Halo? Yes, They used to be called the Covenant. The Covenant, They used to be called the Covenant. It was a collection of alien races that were, thought they were on a religious mission to extinguish humanity. Mm -hmm. But the Covenant are no more. They've agreed to be peaceful. But the Banished are like a a splinter faction of that. So the Brutes are back. All Mm -hmm. the old races Mm -hmm. are back. There's some new things. Um, But yeah, the Brutes being back is, is the big thing here. Gotcha. So they are a new enemy faction uh, made up of some of those new those familiar races. Um, <clears throat> we will find their encampments. Then we will lay waste to the foes across the map. Uh, the trailer also shows off Halo Infinite's new tactical map. And it looks like players can explore the game at their own pace. We also get a little bit of a glimpse at Halo Infinite's RPG system for its suit upgrades, which makes me super excited. Uh, love RPG elements, big old Mass Effect fan. So being able to see that kind of like upgrade your shit a little bit as you go makes me in a space shooter makes me really excited. Halo Infinite's campaign was a no show at Gamescom, which a lot of people were upset about back in August. But three four three boss Joseph Staten acknowledged it and says uh, gives us a little bit of insight about why it was made, why that decision was made. He said the development team is now in shutdown mode which means the work on the game's main features for launch is finished, and the studio is now fixing the highest priority bugs. This is a big job that takes a lot of time and resources, and creating a new campaign demo or trailer to show off campaigns would have, been, would have slowed things down. Which makes me think, one, there is no fucking way on God's green earth this game would have ever come out last year. No. <laughs> two, they are pushing up against this release date it sounds like if they don't even have a small team that can cut a trailer for for it because they're in shutdown mode like that with especially with holiday breaks coming up which who knows if they're even going to get any kind of time off for those um with that team but it sounds like they when it gets to day one there will probably be a hefty day one patch and probably a hefty week one patch and probably a hefty couple of patches after that um but I do have faith in this team that when they release it, it'll actually be a quality product. Yeah. Well, you saw um, all of this, I assume, Adam. How did this footage yep. tickle your pickle? <laughs> well, my pickle's been tickled, right? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, watching it, it was cool. It looks way better than the last year's one. They even made a point of showing when the brute got real close to your face. Like, they've redone that whole scene, and he looks 100 times better. He doesn't look yeah. like a... Bruce or whatever they called that other guy, um, they changed and made it look better for sure. Like it definitely needed the time. That's that's uh, for certain. I really like what they showed off. I like the structure of it just being. This is an open world again, coming off of Far Cry Six. It's like, oh yeah, this is like an open world RPG now. It's no longer yeah. like I'm sure there are sections where it will be more like a traditional level. It's like, oh, go through here and this will be like a constructed thing. But it's definitely just become like an open world action or rpg which i think is good because again i liked halo but the campaigns have been like fine or not good in the case of five so i'm like yeah change it up do something interesting and it looks cool all the powers look fun and the main thing is like yo if that multiplayer if we get the way the multiplayer plays do that in the campaign that'll shut up the campaign nerds and then everyone else can enjoy the multiplayer which will be the best part of the game but if they are both good that's better overall but, you know, this is the thing I'll play, like, once I'll beat it and I'll never worry about it again. But it's cool yeah. for the people who want it. And I'm interested in the lore. But, you know, I'm glad that they're actually being able to get the game out. And uh, as long as that can't, uh, multiplayer stays good, that's what really matters to me. But it was cool to see this as well. Yeah. 
I'm really, I'm really excited for, in a completely different way for Halo than I've ever been before, and in that I'm excited for the multiplayer. I was never a multiplayer Halo person. I was a little bit like playing with my my cousins and stuff like that as a kid uh, locally, but it was never an online multiplayer. I was never really an online competitive multiplayer person until like a few years ago. But uh, I'm excited for the the standalone free to play multiplayer on Xbox for all of that and what it means because I think that's going to be really fun playing that with friends. And then the campaign, which is usually the part of Halo that I was really into, was just playing co-op with it. I already was like having reservations like, am I going to play this or am I going to wait till co-op? But there was also uh, something that was coming out last week that said that ray tracing won't be available in the campaign at launch. But it's like a priority for like one of the very first things that they will do after launch. So I think that like as as good as this footage looked, if I'm going to play it, like you said, I'm going to play it one time. And then I probably won't think about it again. And I'll just continue playing multiplayer. If I'm going to play it, I'm going to wait to play it right after the first couple mm-hmm. of patches, after ray tracing. Like I have the Series X for all of that kind of shit. So I'm probably going to hold off on the campaign until early in the new year. Yep. Maybe the same. But I'd just be glad that they actually seem like they they got what they wanted out of it. They did some work on it. And again, I don't, I'm not the one who's going to complain about it. But for the people who were worried about it, I think there's not a lot to worry about. And then we'll get patches and we'll get... You know, this game is a live, half of the game is a live service. So, yeah, you know, we'll keep getting upgrades and I think we'll be fine. I was just happy that they showed it. And it was awesome that we were like, we got to push back the, we got to push back the recording because your internet doesn't work for Destiny. And I was like, <laughs> all right, cool. And then they're like, by the way, trailer tomorrow. I'm like, perfect. Perfect. Yep. Let's go. Very nice. Speaking of Xbox games, Everwild wasn't actually rebooted. Who knew? You know who else knew? Joe Knopp at IGN, as he told us in an article on IGN.com. Uh, back in June, there was a report that indicated that Everwild, which is Rare's newest IP, the company that brought us Donkey Kong Country, Perfect Dark, and uh, Sea of Thieves, was being completely and that rebooted. Horror game. And that horror game. Remember? Which horror game? From the Game on Game show last week. Oh, uh, yeah. Th- uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. That's what it was. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yep. Yeah. Um, apparently, Everwild wasn't actually... Uh, the report said it was being completely rebooted. But in an interview with Kind of Funny Games, uh, Xbox Game Studios head Matt Booty said that the report was, quote, more definite and a little more extreme than the truth. Uh, here's the full quote from Booty. It says, what is Rare known for? They're known for creating new IP and creating worlds. I'll say when you look at it from the outside, when you hear words like reset and maybe restructure, those are probably a little more definite and a little more extreme than what really happens as a game comes to life. Every day you're making hundreds of small decisions, and at the end of however long you work on the game, they all add up. I think that's where the Everwild team is right now. They're just trying to make sure they've got something special. Cool. I'm I'm all for like them like making creative decisions to make sure the game looks awesome because honestly the first trailer they showed like I'm it looked like a cool game I was super interested and I want it to be great. Yep, I'm same here. It looks interesting and looks like that kind of rare flair. It's like oh we're gonna do something whimsical and and crazy, but then there people were like rebooting and everyone's like oh it's gonna take four years because they started from scratch and it's like relax, <laughs> it's not gonna take four years. Um, so. I'm interested whenever it comes out. I still don't really know what the game is, but yeah, I would rather them mess around and have ideas and get rid of stuff that doesn't work and, you know, put out the better game, which most companies do, but it's just yeah. a weird thing that someone was like the game starting from the ground up. And it's just like, all right, yeah. I guess I have to clarify this because you guys are talking at a, at a turn. Yeah. It just, it sounds like that's a normal part of game development process for most places. And then for some reason, one person was like, Hey, this game's in trouble. I'm like, no, that's, that's just what people fucking do. Just a a nice clarification. Yeah. Um, Kratos. Y'all know that man? All beefy hunk with a new beard? It's coming to PC. Joe Scrubbles at IGN tells us this. 2018's God of War, which is my personal favorite game of all time. That's my opinion, not Joe Scrubbles' opinion, although it could be. It might Uh, be. It it might be. It's on its way to PC, arriving for Steam and Epic Games Store on January 14th. This is something that has been like rumored for a long time people always get their panties in a wad whenever it comes to playstation exclusives coming to pc we've already established our stances on it so like shut up but here's the deets (laughs) steam and epic game store listings for the game appeared today adding that the game has enhanced visuals unlocked frame rates which is really cool 4k resolution options and 
NVIDIA DLSS and Reflex support. The I feel like DLSS, which is deep learning super sampling, is kind of like the new ray tracing. Like it's the new hot oh, button. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so good. Um, it basically like it's it's a new way of doing anti aliasing, so that way you can make really detailed, super sharp visuals, especially far away. So that's really cool. And it's coming to God of War. I bet that game just looks fucking gorgeous, including on widescreen, ultra widescreen monitors uh, with 29 by, 21 by 9 ratios. It'll support multiple controllers as well as mouse and keyboard. I don't know. I know PC supports dual sense. Do we know if this will support the haptic feedback? I don't know about that. I don't know if that's exclusive you know to being on the console or not. I also don't now that I now that I say it out loud, I don't even think that the PS5 patch that unlocked 4K60 had haptics built in. So I don't even think it's a no, thing that yeah. we have to consider. I think it was just rumble. Yeah. Yep. Uh last thing, Sony Santa Monica's Grace or Lady says says says, quote, our primary goal when bringing God of War to PC was to highlight the exceptional content the team created and leverage the powerful hardware that the platform offers to create a uniquely breathtaking and high-performance version of the game. Dope. I bet it's going to look fan-freaking-tastic. Oh, boy. It's going to look great, and I'm happy... More Put every game on PC. Just give people the option. Like, you know, everyone knows our stances. It's like it doesn't... It literally doesn't hurt you if you're a fanboy that it can go to PC. Like, it just it doesn't do anything wrong. But it is cool to see, basically, in the last year, most of the heavy hitters are going to PC. Like, we got that Uncharted collection coming to PC <laughs> to coincide with that movie. <laughs> uh, we've got <laughs> God of War now, um, Horizon, Death Stranding, whatever. Um, so, again, I'm just like, put everything on PC. Awesome. Let, let there be more stuff everywhere. But And then, you know. Unlock frame rate, all the stuff that they're adding to the PC version, which will make this be the best looking version of the game. So if you have a nice PC and haven't played it in a while, you know, maybe check it out and be even more impressed by how awesome that game is. I yeah. think it's nothing but good. It's all yeah. thumbs up for me. It also kind of aligns with um I can't remember whether it was Jim Ryan or whether it was Herman Holst. Somebody from PlayStation this week said PlayStation's strategy with its exclusive games is to reach hundreds of thousands of players, which you know, PlayStation 4 sold, what, 110, 115,000, I think is the most, sorry, million, hundreds of millions of players, yeah, I think not thousand. Right at about like 105 million or something. Yeah, somewhere in there, 110. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that lines up, it checks out. So this is a funny games. thing, though. Oh, yeah, go oh, for it. Real quick, is that a lot of companies, I think it was Capcom a couple weeks ago that are like, are, we are, our number one focus is on the PC gamer because that is the yeah. biggest market. Like, everyone's just like, yo, you'll make money if you put shit on Steam. So why are we not doing this? <laughs> like, just make your money. Like, right? it's just nice to have options for people. Because there are a lot of people who don't have consoles. Like, I don't know if this is still a thing, but I went to China, you know, you know, 15 years ago or something, and there's no console gaming. People do not console game in China at all. It was all PC stuff. And again, it's been 15 years. I don't know what it's like there now, but it's like China's the biggest market in the world, like based yeah. on population. Uh, so you'd be crazy to not service the, I mean, the movie industry literally does this. They're like, yo, we got to make money in China and America because that's where we make our money. So, yeah. you know, make, they make their money and everyone has more options, which is never a bad thing. It was uh, it was illegal to sell video game consoles there from outside of China. So uh, mm -hmm. until about three or four years ago, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I know it was a big deal whenever PlayStation and Nintendo could find like an Xbox could finally start selling their stuff in China. But even then, the game selection is highly restricted due to yeah. China. Um, but so like, you PCs. could buy you could buy a Nintendo Switch, but you could only play like ten games on it. Yeah. Um, can't play Kingdom Hearts because Winnie the Pooh's in it. That's right. <laughs> uh, speaking of PC gaming, you can stream your PC games now on Xbox. What? But you can't mm -hmm. do it for this one game. Number six will surprise you. This comes from Tom oh. Ivan at VGC. So GeForce Now, which is a streaming service for video games that allows you to stream your PC games, has been out for a while and includes now beta support for Microsoft Edge Browser. Guess what's on your Xbox console? <gasps> Microsoft Edge Browser! So you can now stream your PC games to your console, which is pretty dope. 
Having tested out the service uh, on Xbox, Verge reporter Tom Warren reports that Death Stranding is the one game that's just for some reason not available and is probably due to some contractual agreements about where and how the game can be played. When it released, it was a, P a PlayStation exclusive game. It just got a PC, report, uh, PC version port either earlier this year or last year. And it probably still has some contractual stuff that says, hey, don't you dare play this on an Xbox yet. Or uh, just don't so stream it, period, probably, is what the main thing is. Ooh, or maybe don't stream it. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Uh, GeForce Now includes over, in access to over 1,000 PC games. Edge Browser on Xbox also supports mouse and keyboard input, enabling players uh, to play some games that don't even have controller support. Sweet. So, so this that, is all very cool. Yeah, that that paired with Game Pass streaming coming to consoles this fall as well is like... You don't need to download anything ever again. In fact, all these people paying hundreds of dollars for external hard drives and flash drives and NVMe 2 drive. Like, you don't need storage anymore. You just stream shit from your PC. Play it on the cloud. Or even the cool thing with the GeForce Now, I believe, is that it's like xCloud or it's like Stadia, but good, where... NVIDIA has a server farm full of 3090s. That's where they've been hiding them. Or I think it's 3080s. <laughs> they have all their graphics card hidden away in a warehouse, but they're using those to stream these games to your PC. So I was looking, because it popped up on an ad the other day because I have an NVIDIA card, and it was like, hey, subscribe to this service, and you can stream the game as if you were playing it on a 3080 to your PC without having to have a 3080 card. And I was like, oh boy. Just like Xbox recently did that, like every game that's streamed is now running off of series x hardware yeah. so when you stream a game on xcloud it's like you're playing the series x version but yeah you don't you might not never need to buy a, a download another game again because like, anytime i've used that again i haven't used stadia anytime i've used xcloud or any streaming service it works great to me again i also hard lined in and whatever yeah but you're giving me power off of a, a, a graphics card i can't even buy right now and I can just play that on the TV or on the PC or wherever you want to do it. And I can play everything but Death Stranding, which I don't care. Awesome. I'm all about that. I think this is super cool. Like Everything's changing. Steam Deck's coming out. You can stream you know, the highest quality PC game to your TV now. Like This is wild, man. What a yeah. time we're living in. Shaggy's getting his own fighting game. <laughs> I'm, yeah, this is... I don't think GeForce Now gets enough credit, like an, enough publicity. It's like... It's super cool, and everyone always talks about Stadia or Game Pass or PS Now, but nobody, well, nobody talks about PS Now, but, like, <laughs> GeForce Now doesn't get any love, but it's really cool. Our last segment here, or our last story here, Ubisoft may be bringing back a fan favorite. Oh, Matt Purcell from IGN gives us some deets. Ubisoft has reportedly greenlit development of a new mainline Splinter Cell game, not to be confused with Splinter. And cells like mitochondria and and all that kind of shit and mitosis. If the rumor mitosis. proves true, it will be the first core entry in the Tom Clancy stealth series since 2013's Splinter Cell Blacklist. Multiple development uh, sources have revealed that a new Splinter Cell is in an early phase of production, with a small chance of the game being announced in 2022. The project has apparently been greenlit as part of an effort to appease frustrated Tom Clancy and Splinter Cell fans. Frustrated to say the least, who have been less than happy with Ubisoft's treatment of the brand over the last decade. No further details were provided in the report aside from the suggestion that the new Splinter Cell may be developed outside of Ubisoft's flagship Montreal studio. Ubisoft Montreal developed key Splinter Cell games, including the, uh, the original Chaos Theory and Conviction. The original Chaos Theory and Conviction. The most recent game, Blacklist, was developed at Ubisoft Toronto. Ubisoft Montreal also developed. Prince of Persia 2008 that we're playing for Barf. Mm. Interesting. Are you Splinter Cell guy? I, I have never played before. a Splinter Cell game in my life, but I have watched a trailer for Splinter Cell coming to a mobile game that Ubisoft made with a bunch of other characters mm. from Ubisoft games. Yes, I remember that. I don't know if that game ever came out. Uh, I love Splinter Cell. Dude, I played the hell out of Splinter Cell for years and years, until 2013, actually. Uh, it's a great series. It's a it's a good stealth game. One of the best out there. And 
I love that they point out in this uh, report, the project has been greenlit as part of an effort to appease frustrated Tom Clancy and Twitter cell fans. Yeah. Sam Fisher doesn't show up unless he's in some knockoff ghost recon. Like it doesn't, yep. it makes no sense where you get disrespected like that. And again, maybe it doesn't sell super well, but here's the thing that I like to do. And I don't agree with this all the time. Like the idea of people like bullying somebody to get what they want is never a good thing, but people kept every time that EA would do a post on Instagram, people would go in the, in the comments and say, skate four, skate four, skate four, skate four, skate four, skate four, skate four <laughs> for years. And now we're getting a skate four. People were like, yo, we liked Mirror's Edge. And they gave us another Mirror's Edge. People were like, hey, where the where the fuck is Sam Fisher at? And they're like, you know what? Shut up. We're gonna make a Splinter Cell game. <laughs> it's like, good. You know what? I don't like I don't like to, you know, complain too much, but the squeaky wheel gets the grease, as uh Westerners used to say in the eighteen nineties. So <laughs> I'd be happy if we can get something good. Uh, I'm kind of worried. I think it was Alana Pierce was talking about like, hey. Be careful. This is just going to be another Ubisoft game where it's like open world, do your do your check mark things. I'm like, yeah, I like those games, but I don't necessarily want that out of Splinter Cell. You can do it different, but I don't want just Watch Dogs Splinter Cell. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, if they're doing stuff to appease us, you would hope that they would know how to appease us. Because like Blacklist is different from a lot of the other ones, but it's still good. So, you know. Cater to me. I'm a cater to. I was just trying to think of that Beyonce song, but that that melody was completely wrong. So, anyways, <laughs> Chad, so. I I've, I'm in, I, like I could be interested in Splinter Cell again. I've just never played one before. In fact, I was back in that time. I was never really into the only like stealthy game that I had ever played was Metal Gear Solid, and like mm-hmm. I didn't even do that until like late in high school, early college, which would have been around 2013, but. Um, no, that's a lie. I'm older than that. That would have been around like 2008, 2009. Um, but I find myself like my interests and what Ubisoft is doing are like slowly drifting apart over the last like five years. So I'm not like, I can't even like off the top of my head right now, I can't even list a Ubisoft game that I'm excited about one that's out or that is coming out. All I can think of is like Assassin's Creed, which to me is just like, fine or uh what's the game that came out last year that nobody played watch dogs legion i, I just think watch about watch i'm like it came out nobody knew right. it came out and then but what about surprise hit of last year immortals phoenix rising which a lot of people argue is better than breath of the wild you're right but i also don't think breath of the wild is good but our fun friend uh mr lacourt the other day not the other day several months ago <laughs> said <laughs> <laughs> that he also agrees that yeah, it is the better, more rewarding Breath of the Wild, which is exactly what I, I didn't like about Breath, Breath of the, the Wild, Wild. But I liked Immortals: Phoenix Rising a lot. We, I love that we now have a unified platform in reference to Breath of the Wild. We, mm-hmm. as Respawn Aim Fire, can firmly and unanimously declare that we did not like Breath of the Wild. This is fantastic yeah, news. Hold, you suck. No, a lot of people oh, like that game. Sucks. You suck. I know a lot of people like that game. I don't think it was bad. I was just like, I don't enjoy this that much. I it don't think it's boring. badly made. I just don't. Yeah, I found it extremely boring and empty. And then Immortals yep. was like, oh, they got jokes and it's Greek inspired. You got me. Nice. I did not. I, I admittedly did not play that because of its ties to Breath of the Wild and conversation. I was like, well, I didn't like that. So why would I like this? We know what I do like. Game on Game Show! The Game on Our Game Show, we play a game called Game On! The Game on Our Game Show! Game, 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 game! Adam, we've got a fun one this week! It is mm-hmm. the second iteration of this game that we've ever played. It's called Guess What Happened This Week! It's a fun way to just take a look back in gaming history and uh, recognize some cool launches of game systems, technologies uh, that have happened this week in the past. Okay. So, going from the week of October 24th, which was yesterday... Mm-hmm. All the way through October 30th, uh, I have how many? 10 maybe? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 major releases or events that happened in gaming history. I will give you the date that it happened, the year, and then like a little short sentence or like blurb about like a, like a little riddle or a quiz or just like a clue to what it is. And then we'll have you guess what it was that released okay. that day and that year. You ready? I got a riddle for you. Ooh. What's black and blue and dead all over? You. You. 
I saw that. I went to go see um, a Dune in IMAX in San Francisco on the ginormous fucking screen in San Francisco. And they played that trailer there. And oh, I was boy. Just, oh, my God. My eyes were crying blood. It was so beautiful. I might have passed out before the movie started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one. On October 24th, 2014, it was about mm-hmm. seven years ago. God damn it, seven years ago. Nope. <clears throat> Here's your clue. Cast an oversexed Harry Hex again. Oh, Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta 2, that's right. Released on the Wii U on October 24th, 2014, scoring 10 out of 10s a lot of places. People like the hair witch. They do like the hair witch. That, that sexy, sexy hair witch. All right. October 26th. So this is tomorrow, Tuesday. In 2000, spend your time walking in other shoes. But don't take too long because you only have three days. Uh, Majora's Mask? It is Zelda Majora's Mask. That is correct. Three yeah. days. Have you seen the trailer for the new movie Moonfall, which is just Majora's Mask the movie? No, I have not seen that. That sounds it's, really cool. Yeah, it's just the moon is going to crash into the earth, but then there's all this sci-fi, and it's got like a stellar fucking cast in it, too. You should look at the trailer. Actually, yeah. It's good. Also, that same exact day, October 26, 2000. Ooh. This thing plays movies, huh? But where do I put the VHS? This thing plays movies, but where do I put the VHS? Is this gaming related, right? It is. Yes. <laughs> So I want to say PS2. That is correct. Because I bought that as a DVD player. Okay. Is that 2000, huh? That was 2000. Yeah, that was the uh, the world's most advanced DVD player and was the number one DVD player in the world for a very long time. That's why there's so many units. You know what's crazy? Think about that. That Majora's Mask came out the same day as the PS2. And you're like, look at this brand new. And then here's (laughs) the N64 right over here. Hanging out. (laughs) Yep. That same day, October 24th, or sorry, October 26th, but in 2004. Okay. Here's the clue. Because of this, McDonald's legally has to put a disclaimer on its cups. And it also infamously got this game banned with an AO rating. What a good, what a good way to bring that all around. That's a hot coffee, baby. Come on. That is hot coffee because GTA San Andreas launched on PS2, October 26, 2004. Damn. That game did go AO for a little bit, and then they had to release a, a new version, like a new boxed copy of it, a with that disc. completely removed. Because people had to, you had to mod your console in order to unlock it. Like you couldn't just like unlock it with a cheat code. You had to actually mod your console. Or if you were a PC, you could just do your PC magic. Believe me, as a kid, you were just like, "How do I get the hot coffee? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do this. There must be a cheat code. How do I do hot coffee?" And then you look yeah. at it now, it's like that's not even. That's not even that <laughs> Right. <laughs> I've seen worse things like that created by five-year-olds on Roblox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one for this date, October 26th. So it's a very big date in history. In mm. 2018, boring game about horse butts that everyone loves. Boring game about horse butts? Yep. <laughs> I mean... It's not a boring game, so it couldn't be Red Dead 2. It is Red Dead 2. Yeah, I, you were wrong on the, the first part, but it is Red Dead 2. Yep. <laughs> boring game about horse butts. <sighs> well, the best game's ever made, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are halfway through. October 27th, moving on. In 2002. Prepare to spend all night on the beach till the break of dawn in this breakthrough open world game. Give me the, the date, what was the year again? 2002, October 27, 2002. 2002, and what was the thing again? Prepare to spend all night on the beach till the break of dawn in this breakthrough open world game. Huh. Beach open world game. So I want to say Mario Sunshine, but the break of dawn part doesn't make sense for that. Take that all together. All night on the beach till the break of dawn. Uh-huh. Which is a line from a famous song by Sir William Smith. Actually, it's Wilfred. Okay. Did you know that? It's Wilfred Smith, not William. His name's Wilfred? Wilfred. Break of dawn. All night on the beach to the break of dawn. Welcome to 
Miami. <laughs> mm-hmm. A breaker okay. open world game set in a Miami esque. Oh. Vice City. Yes, Rockstar loves this October release time window. I was about to say that's two of them that are just right next to each other, huh? Or the yep. dates, you know? Yeah, can you look at that? We got two years apart. We got Vice City and San Andreas. And mm. now it's been 56 years <laughs> since we got GTA 5 <laughs> it's the first been, time. And what we still say haven't gotten it the third time. It's been 59 years. 84 years. years. Oh, 108 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, same day, October twenty seventh, but in two thousand seventeen, this one's okay. this one's this is a good one. A magic hat with a functioning occipital lobe performs one of the Wizarding World's unforgivable curses as it forces beings, large and small, to do its bidding. No sex stuff, though. Yes, Cappy is evil. You're correct. Yes. Can the game was it? oh that's right you because to, Zelda you have to was say the name out loud at the point. Uh, Mario Brothers Odyssey, Super yeah, Mario, Super Mario Odyssey. Odyssey on Nintendo Switch. Yep, I forget. Yeah, I I didn't realize it was that late. I thought it was like late summer. I guess October is late summer, kind of. <laughs> uh, it's it's pushing it, but yeah, it was, remember because it was the same day as um as uh all fuck. those other games. <laughs> yeah, all everything. It was like Assassin's Creed, uh, Wolfenstein, and Assassin's Wolfenstein Creed, too. Yeah. Yep. All right, October 28th. We've got three left. October 28th in 2008. A world full of scrappy brown stuff that lets you make a megaton of choices with meaningful consequences. Fallout 3. That's right, Fallout 3. So brown. It's the first time a lot of people played a Fallout game. That era of gaming is so just like brown and tan and gray. Yeah. And everyone was like, this is so gritty. And I'm like, this looks like shit now. At the time, <laughs> I was like, this looks cool. But I'm like, this looks like shit. <laughs> and Gears of War. I was like, oh, man. Earth Fucking tones. all the Call of Duties. All the Call of Duty. Yep. All right. October 29th. Going way back to 1988. Ooh. If you consider yourself a Sega kid, you probably got your start with this console. Sega Genesis? That is correct. Although this particular date is the release of the Sega Mega Drive, which is what it was called everywhere else in the world in Japan. Oh. Yeah, in the US. So wait, is it Genesis or is it Mega Drive? So the US, it's Genesis. Everywhere else is Mega Drive. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So this was the release date of the Mega Drive in Japan. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Last one, October 30th, 1992. Without this game, there's no way you'd ever dream of dancing all night at the Royal Ball. Dancing all night at the Royal Ball? Is there some kind of Will Smith connection? (laughs) No, but it is a little bit more like it's not necessarily having to do with a ball or a dance. Uh Uh-huh. But without this game, though, you'd never even dream of dancing all night. At the royal ball. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Is it? I'm just gonna go and guess. It's Persona One. Close. That was that was the, what the clues were hinting at. It is Shin yeah. Megami Tensei, mm. which Persona, I believe, is a spinoff of. Right. Yes, Persona is the spinoff that's better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played any of those games, um, but that was my understanding. So yes, Shin Megami Tensei released on the Super Famicom in Japan on October 30th. 1992 that series has and been around for 30 years there was there are there are several persona spinoffs like persona dancing all night persona 5 yep. royal mm-hmm. see it see see where i went when you that. first did it i was like dance dance revolution I was like nope don't say the first words that come to your <laughs> mouth um and then you finish the sentences like oh i'm like okay so that's persona but like which one would this be so yeah i forgot it was shimagami tensei you're correct i did all right that was like eight out of ten I just, we'll count all of them. Yeah. You got all of them. Perfect. I'm perfect. Yep. That's it for Game on Game Show, and that is it for episode 230 of Respawn Aim Fire. Thank you, everyone, for listening and or watching. Reminder of a couple of things. Uh, go check out our reviews. Metroid Dread, Far Cry 6, both of which will be up on Wednesday morning on YouTube and podcast services. Go to patreon.com slash Fire if you want to watch them right now, the very first second this is available, and you can listen to it 24 hours in advance, or even more if you went back in time. 
Um, go do that. Pay a buck. Vote for Barf Games. Uh, play with us on game nights when we have them. Get dope wallpapers, etc. Oh, by the way, just yes. throw this in now. We'll see if there's interest, but I want to do game night this Friday, October 29th. It's spooky season. I want to play Back for Blood if anyone's down to play Back for Blood. It's cross-platform, free on Game Pass. We should play Back for Blood this Friday evening as part of Game Nights. I will be there because I want to play more Back for Blood. So we'll put it up on Patreon. But yeah, if people want to play, you hear me now. Be there then in the future. Do it. Do it. Um, I will not be there on Friday, uh, but I highly encourage everyone else to go play Back for Blood because that game is going to be fun as hell with friends. Hell yeah. And again, it's free on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, go do it. If you don't have Game Pass, Black Friday is coming up. Get Game Pass. Yep. Uh, and then again, I, I don't expect you to find any way in the fucking universe to play Prince of Persia 2008. But... Uh, we will be talking about it in like a week or two um, as part of what you chose for us for Barf this month. So it is your fault, everyone yeah, out there. I, I on believe Patreon. specifically that Alex Cozina was like, I'm going to vote for this so I'll finally play it. So if he doesn't write in a four paragraph <laughs> essay about Prince of Persia 2018 or 2008, I'll be very upset. I swear to God, if we don't get a cozy email, we probably will and we won't read it because yeah, we're about it. bad at it. But. Uh, yeah, do that, y'all. And that's it. That's it for our podcast. So um, thank you, Adam. Mr. Adam Crinkle Cut Gumby that I remembered off the top of my head still an hour and a half later. Good job. Uh, thank you, all of you listeners. Until next time, here's our usual sign-off. What do you think ostrich burps sound like? <laughs> <laughs>